Welcome back, this is Context Menus Part 4. In Part 4 we're going to be going over random stuff that really didn't fit in any other video. In some cases this is uh, in response to questions I've got, in other cases it's a functionality which I missed in my initial sort of review and research on the Context Menus. You can check the video description for a list of chapters and where we're going over them, and also a list of things that we've covered, and you can also seek through the uh, timeline bar if you're on YouTube. Let's get going. Well, first of all, we're going to cover uh, what I'm sort of calling the, the Triforce of Context Menu Components, which I've got in my public folder here. It's just a set of um, component clone tips which are set up uh, to make making context menus a little bit faster. Um, I got a little bit sort of frustrated when I was building them myself, just uh, repeatedly adding the same components over and over. over, and over. So uh, for a solution to that, I created these component clone tips. Someone could do probably a much better job than me and make it a lot more optimal, maybe a sort of context menu editor, maybe of a UI or something like that. Feel free to go ahead and do that. This is just something I put together in a few moments to help me out. I'll show you how it works and we'll be using it throughout the video to help us uh, make context menus. Let's go ahead and take a look at these first. So the first thing I want to do is hop into Smooth POV and show you where it is. So I have my private UI on. You can see I'm inside my public folder. I'm going to go into side tools. Inside tools on the bottom right hand corner here is this uh, Triforce as I like to call it and we can just spawn this into the world. It is three context menu, uh, sorry, component clone tips with context menu uh, components on them. If you're not familiar with the component clone tip, the component clone tip can apply components to a slot when you click um, the slot in the sort of handle of the inspector. There is a video linked in the video description which goes over uh, component clone tip a little bit more detail, including how to use it for better. But if you want to just use it for context menus, feel free to just spawn these three out from my public folder and try them out. If you want to do it manually by adding those components, that's also perfectly fine. I'll show you how to use them. We're going to be using... Um, the sub context item a lot and the uh, root context item a lot in this video. So let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm going to go ahead and create a cube with my developer tooltip equipped. I'm going to go to create new 3D model cube or box. Always confuse those two. And with a box created, I'm going to go ahead and add the context menu to this. So with the developer tooltip equipped, secondary, open inspector, start, create a new child, or rename it context. And then instead of going ahead and adding those components, we can go ahead and just go over here and hit root context menu item, and then hit that, and then it's added up. I couldn't get these two to links, so you still just have to grab that and drop it in. I did try sort of figuring out what to do there, but I probably need to do some logics or something. So that's now set up, and I just hit one laser, and you know, there we go, I've got the uh, context menu item working at the root. So now I wanted to cover how to do submenus. So for submenus, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Go ahead and grab sub context item. And there you go. You get a uh, context uh, sub item. And then uh, that's all linked up. You just need to hit star on that. Go to that, set the item root, go to context child, grab the context item one, shoot that. And we're done. We've got a uh, submenu. Just need to hold the cube here, my item, my item submenu set up quite well. Moving on from this, uh, users are asking how to make uh, nested submenus. Easiest way to do this is to add the um, submenu item to an existing um, submenu item. Let me explain what's going on here. So uh, we have the root here, which is the root of our context menu, and it has this context menu submenu component on it. And if we go down to context here, I'll actually rename this to, uh, I'll see this level one, I'm going to call this level one in the, the label as well. And here we're going to go ahead and add component, gradient UI, context menu, context menu, submenu, and then we say that one is the item's root, and then we can hit star here, and that will create another child, and we're going to name that child two. And then we can go ahead and uh, actually use our handy dandy tap. There we go. And then we can name that two. So now we've got a nested submenu. So my item, one, two. And you can nest them quite deep, like I said in the, uh, the original video here. I just want to cover uh, nested directly. Um, I think the problem that the user that was asking me about it was having is that they added the root component to multiple um, multiple submenu levels. You only need the root context menu item on the top, like on the top of the menu. Let me get up a pen and I'll show you what I mean by that. Just so we're incredibly clear. So we have the root context menu item denoted here by R, and then underneath that we have a submenu, and we've got items here, and then maybe this item is a submenu as well, and then there's items underneath that. None of these items need another root because they're underneath a root. If you were to mistakenly maybe add a root here, say a root on this uh, submenu, then this would actually be bumped up to the top as another item because it's got that root item, and then you'd have 
you know in your context menu you'd have both of these items that you can play around with so just keep that clear don't add too many roots and you'll be totally fine so that's submenus out of it the next one i wanted to cover is making uh submenus uh not work or be private and stuff like that that's actually covered by turning off this enable checkbox so if i bring uh, everything out of the way here and i grab this you'll see with the enabled checkbox on i've got my item with one and two in it if i turn this off Yeah, that's interesting. That shouldn't be happening. Let's go ahead and try turning off the context menu item in source instead. Oops. Oh, yep, that's done it. That's why I saved it, because I expected it to be there. So there. Yeah, all you have to do is turn off context menu item source. Got those two confused again. Brand new functionality. Do, do bear with me. So um, the way that you can do this here is wherever you've got a root context menu item that links to a context menu item source, turn off its enabled checkbox. You can do that for a number of um, a number of ways. One of the ways that you might want to do it if you want a context menu that's private just to you is by using something called a values override. If you go to attach component and you go to transform, drivers, go all the way down to the bottom here, values override, select values override bool, uh, set the default to off, add one override, grab the enabled property of context menu item source and drop it into target. Here in this one item that you've added in the override bag, change it to on. Then you just need a reference to you. So to do that, grab a developer tooltip, go to create new, editor, user inspector. Once you're inside the user inspector, select you. Then you see this user object here, grab that and drop it into the top user up here. And now that context menu will only be enabled for you. Let's say someone else gains access to the avatar, grabs it, is parented to it for whatever reason. Only you would be able to see it. So there you go. That's how to do it uh, just locally for you. You could also try experimenting with some items like um, active user and is local user, etc. Let me show you how to do that. Um, I'll cover it, uh, like one use case of it, but I can't really do the get active user thing. I'd have to get another user in here and sort of parent me to them, etc. Let's go ahead and do that. So for context menu item source, you can go ahead and drop that into the world. And then you could do something along the lines of uh, get an equal equal node from operators here. Go to users and then do, actually we don't need to do it that way. We'll do it, we'll continue doing this way. I'll show you how to do it the other way. We'll do local user equal. And then we could do say user from username. Oop, dear, got those linked. user from username and then you could enter your username here so I could go ahead and enter this probable here and I can set these two to true and then I can plug this into the enabled and then that way um, if the local user is me I'll be able to use it and if not then uh, I won't Let's see that did no ah that's why that did no because I added a tilde on the end. There we go. Yep, there we go. Now it's on. So now only I can see that context menu. Values override might be more preferable. If you're confused on values override, I do have a video in the uh, video description. You can also do things here like um, the shortcut that I was uh, probably being yelled at in the comments right now, which is uh, is local user. There it is. You can do that. And then you don't need the equal equal again. Completely up to you. You could also do something along the lines of um, slots get active user and then use the get active user node where this is uh, the person that's parented to it. So here again, uh, it's disabled for me until I'm uh, picking it up because then I'm the active user. There's just some options for you if you want to hide your context menu under various options. I did also see something where um, someone wanted to hide their custom context menu if they uh, had a tool equipped. That I thought was a great example. I might actually employ that on my uh, my context menu, so I want to show you how to do that. So if you go back to the uh, node root, you can go inside tools, and then you can say, is tooltip equipped? I think it takes a tooltip. No, is tooltip in use? Uh... Tooltip equipping has tooltip. That's what I was looking for. Sorry. Has tooltip. There we go. So here you can say has tooltip. And again, you could use the active user and you can say, hey, does the active user have a tooltip on the left? And then you could say clone this node and say, hey, does the active user have a tooltip on the right? And then you could combine these two and you could say, hey, uh, if you have an active tooltip on the left or the right, 
then don't set that enabled. So here it's saying, because uh, the active user is no one right now. Here we go. Here, so here it's saying, hey, um, I'm equipping a tooltip, and I've got the tooltip equipped on my right hand, so the context menu is not appearing. If I go ahead and unequip this, now that context menu will appear. And that will work with the left and right hand. So here I'm equipping um, a tooltip on the left hand. I can grab this, and again, I won't have that context menu, but if I let go of it, I will. There you go. There's just some answers for you on how to do that stuff. That is super useful. Might do that in uh, my contact menus. You could probably use a slightly better logics node here, but I do want to keep it clear. The or node just will put true if any of these is true. So has tooltip left or has tooltip right. And then that will be true. And then you knot it to turn a true into a false. And that will disable that. Probably nor if you've got nor. Yeah, we have nor. You could just use nor in place of the, this setup. I do want to keep it as simple as I can in some cases. Like I said, this is a messier video because it's just stuff I've been asked over the couple of days. Next, let's go into some of the items that were added to the... Uh, get rid of this for now. Some of the items that were added to the uh, components themselves. So here in the components themselves, you can see that there is uh, a close menu on press item. So uh, that's more useful for uh, non-sub menus. Let's go ahead and create a non-sub menu by just deleting this sub menu here. Uh, and what this says is here, close the menu on press, which means when you push it, it will automatically close it. So here I'm grabbing it, and I'm, uh, oh, I need to manually enable that again. Let me see, make sure we manually enable that one as well. There we go. Uh, I should have totally named them something different. So we'll name this one, uh, name that one too, there we go. So here it will close that context menu because that checkbox is enabled. But if I uncheck that checkbox, then when I click to it will stay open. That's useful if you have an option which is sort of final, you know, uh, it does an effect which, you know, can't be cancelled or shouldn't lead to any other things going on, maybe a sort of teleport or a turn off or something like that. That, I believe, is it. Actually, I do want to go over the uh, context menu sub menu options. So there are a few here. Search hole hierarchy will mean that it will descend uh, further than you would think. It will look through everything to try and find items, not just the immediate um, children. Try and avoid that one. Um, it does have a performance impact where it, you know, it's going to have to search through everything and find it. I don't really see much use to that one. Disable flick. Uh, flick is actually a feature which not many people know that the context menu has, so I'll go over that briefly. So flick is where if you um, have a context menu open and you hold trigger, you'll see that circle shrinks, and you can kind of just sort of flick it to the side. You don't need to click it. So some people use that because it's really, really fast. Um, I don't, uh, but you can go ahead and disable the flick on your context menu if you'd like. Uh, speed override, I'm not entirely sure, but it's probably uh, something to do with the, the flick speed, etc. And then counterclockwise will change the order in which the uh, items get added. Let's say we had, uh, let's just add a few more. Actually, no, I don't want to add them to level, to level 2, that'll be too low. Let's add some more to uh, level 1 here. And then we'll just give them numbers so we can see them changing. So that's 2 three that's four and so if i have that uh, to grab a box if i have that enabled and we go into my item you'll see it's one two three four if i go back up here and i say on the sub menu here counterclockwise two one one two three four so it's going counterclockwise rather than clockwise there again that might just be if you've you know got something ordered in a particular way that you might want to do that also might be useful for sort of left and right um differences here if you think about things spatially you might want the mirrored on the left side than the right slide but you might want the same structure there that i believe is it if you have any more questions do let me know um once again this is just sort of a messier video which goes over random questions that i've had um do let me know if you like this sort of video i know it was sort of less structured than uh, many of those were um Come back at me with any other questions you have on context menus. Otherwise, we'll be moving on to other things. You will see context menus in various tutorials as we uh, as we move on because they're great. Um, I can't stress it enough. They're just like fantastic, especially now that they work with logics and components. You can pretty much just do whatever you want with them. Um, you know, things like multi tools, things like uh, custom UI, much 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 more easier. I've already started integrating it to various things that I used to have on sort of really weird gesture locks. For example, I've got a tongue I can turn on by double pressing something. There's a Teletubby avatar I have where you could select the Teletubby using just a double tap of the context menu, but now I can make a full context menu of the Teletubby faces and go through them. It's going to be fantastic. I'll see you next time for another video. Goodbye.